Hi, I'm Steve Spiro, the CEO of Halo Therapy Solutions and the chairman of the Global Wellness Institute. I want to thank all of you for attending. This is obviously a very, very important subject given how many people have registered for this uh, webinar. Obviously, all of us have been through very, very difficult times the last couple of months, and the next few months are going to be challenging as well. But I'm super encouraged and have never been more optimistic about the industry. We've been getting so many calls from consumers and businesses asking questions, and never has respiratory wellness and respiratory hygiene been ever as important as it is now. So we're very optimistic, and we want to make this about opening and really helping you guys thrive when it opens. I think we're going to be more successful, all of us, as an industry than ever before. Uh, we had a webinar last week. Uh, the Global Wellness Institute put it on, and there's a recording there. 450 people attended from 59 countries want to learn more about halo therapy. It, it, was, it was fantastic, all the speakers we had, so I encourage that. The World Halo Therapy Association, which is really the industry association, has been overwhelmed with people wanting to join and ask questions. So they have some great uh, information there as well. So, but today we have two great speakers. We have Aaron from the UK and we have Lisa from the US. And without any further ado, we really wanna talk, they're gonna talk to you about you know, the health and safety, how to open very well. And Lisa's gonna talk about some new marketing ideas you may not have thought about how to get some new customers because of the COVID-19. So again, we're very, very optimistic. We're here for you. We're gonna, Aaron's gonna talk for about 20 minutes. Lisa's gonna talk for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna leave another 20 to 30 minutes open for questions and answers. If we don't get to all your questions, just email us at info at halotherapysolutions.com and we will do our best to answer all of you. So again, thank you very much. <laughs> let's be optimistic. Let's, let's work as partners to get past all this and be super successful. So thank you guys. So hi everyone, uh, my name's Erin. Um, I work for DROM UK and we specialize in the supply design and installation of custom heat experiences and halo therapy rooms. I just wanted to say a quick thanks to Steve and the team at Halo Therapy Solutions for inviting me to participate in today's session. We've all had a, a really common goal and that is to get this area of the industry open again and to encourage more people to understand and gain the benefits of halo therapy. Today we're looking at how to get clients back in the salt rooms and benefit from halotherapy. I feel that there are potentially four types of customers. Those that want to and will return as soon as you open. Those that need some encouragement and convincing that what they're going to do or what we're doing is safe. Those that may never return or maybe just not for a long time. And then we have the new clients who will now put a greater emphasis on their personal health and well-being. This part of the presentation is mainly focused on reassuring and encouraging your existing clients back. The biggest issue we have following COVID-19 is what I would call the fear factor. It's the unknown that people are afraid of. So it is really important that we work to remove this fear and create a safe and a clean environment so that we can help encourage our clients and customers to return. I could spend hours going through suggestions and forms surrounding health and safety. However, we do have a limited time, so I'll be just touching on the basics and the essentials. Please just remember to cross-reference and check the CDC recommendations and requirements, and also your county, city and state specific requirements, as they may all be a bit different. As I see it, when considering the health and safety around this, we can break it down into three main areas, the client, the operator and the employees, and the premises, including the physical salt room or booth. Let's start with the premises and begin being prepared for people to return. The way I'd look at preparing your establishment would be to put yourself in your client's shoes, do a test run and take note of everything you do, touch and look at. Walk up to your front door, see what you have to do to get into the building. What do you touch? Where do you look? Where is the best place to locate important signage? Does it look clean, tidy and organised? These first impressions will make the biggest impact on how your client or customer is going to feel about continuing with their experience. Once in the reception area, consider the chairs where people would normally sit and wait. Should they be removed? Can they be covered? Or can you easily clean them and sanitise them? Could people wait outside until their session is ready to start? Consider the reception desk. Remove any unnecessary items. 
Would it be beneficial to install a clear screen to provide a protective barrier between clients and employees? Perhaps this is something that you'd like to discuss with your employees to see how, how it would help them make them feel safe. If you plan on having more than one client in the area at a time, if there is space for them, obviously, can areas be marked out? It is important to encourage smart distancing and to provide a safe zone. Ensure hand washing facilities and sanitizer is also available and visible. Keep phone stations sanitized regularly and make sure people see you doing this as well so they can actively see that you're taking care. Moving into the salt room or booth, what seating do you have in there? Should this be removed or can it be easily cleaned and sanitized? One option is to potentially ask your clients to bring their own yoga mats to lie on. Any type of soft furnishings, cushions, woven fabrics are very difficult to sanitize and clean. So careful consideration really should be made as to whether they remain in the rooms. If you have salt on the floor in the loose form, it would be beneficial to, to look at removing this temporarily. Maybe bag it up and keep it in storage until you're able to reintroduce it. This will help make it easier to keep the floor clean. Whilst we all know that salt is antibacterial and antimicrobial, it is also about making the space feel and look clean to the user. Another option could be to assess the space you have and see if it's possible to divide, to divide it into two or more individual rooms by adding in plexiglass dividers, which could be done quite um, inexpensively. An additional generator would potentially be required, or if you have one of the portable versions, you could look at using one half of the room for one session and then moving the generator into the other room while the other half is being cleaned. After each session, all non-porous surfaces will need to be cleaned and sanitized. Porous materials should be disposed of after a single use. Ensure you allow enough time for this to take place. Make sure you check the products of some of them as they do have minimum sitting times required. If you have a halo booth, acrylic walls or clear glass, you'll need to be careful also about how you apply the cleaning products as they can leave unsightly marks or scratch, the dam scratch and damage the surfaces. Do a few tests and maybe even look at spraying onto the cloth rather than directly onto the walls. Remember that the benefit of salt is that it does provide a very hostile environment for bugs and germs and in itself is very protective and self-cleaning. Whilst no studies have been able to confirm that with regards to salt and COVID-19, we do know that the salt is one of the best environments you could be in to provide maximum benefit against germs, specifically with regards to the respiratory system. It's quite important to understand the difference between disinfecting and cleaning. So I use a triangle to help, with the bottom being the broadest and most basic level and the top being the highest level. Cleaning just simply means removing physical, visible debris, dust and dirt. Sanitizing refers to the killing or the reducing of the bacterial population to a safer level. This makes a surface free of visible dirt contaminants that can pose harm to a person's health. So to sanitize the surface, at first must be cleaned. So you work your way up the triangle. Sanitizing can also be done using heat, ultraviolet radiation or chemicals. Disinfecting is the highest in the hierarchy. A disinfectant is a chemical that completely destroys the organisms, pathogens and bacteria listed on its label. Always read the instructions and ensure you leave for the appropriate length of time to ensure maximum effectiveness. Use disinfectants that are EPA registered and labeled as bactericidal, viricidal and fungicidal. No product will be labeled for COVID-19 yet, but many will have human coronavirus efficacy either on the label or available on the website. The EPA has approved any product that has tested as effective against human coronavirus. If in doubt of the effectiveness, check the EPA website. Using the correct disinfectant, it is an important part of preventing and reducing the spread of illness along with other critical aspects such as hand washing. The EPA have published a list on their website and you can search the product by its registration number. This is an example. 
You'll also see that it gives a contact time in minutes. This must be adhered to. UV light technology has also been recognized as a method of sanitizing. This pathogen killer eliminates bacteria and viruses to help protect from illness. By attacking the cell walls of bacteria and viruses, the UV light technology renders them unable to reproduce, consequently eliminating them altogether. UV light is approved by the NHS and used in hospitals and clinics worldwide. It has been scientifically tested and proven to kill up to 99.9% .9 of germs and allergy causing contaminants when used correctly. This particular wand was just released yesterday and retails for approximately $249. More information can be found at www.infraredsauna.com. Ensure all your staff are trained on sanitation and hygiene standards and requirements. These could be included in an updated job description. It is very important that staff lead by example and practice safe distancing no touch greetings and visibly show they're using the correct precautions. We are lucky that halotherapy is generally a touchless therapy and doesn't require a therapist during treatment, so there is far less risk when not spending time in the same enclosed space with someone. Train your staff on handling custom, customer inquiries regarding new policies and operating procedures. Have a set of protocols for your employees to follow Let's now talk about PPE. This is a tricky one, as guidance is constantly changing. The best thing to do is first check if any updates have been provided nationally or locally, and continue to do that regularly. Fortunately, as I mentioned, halotherapy is a touchless one, and therefore there's very little need for aprons, gloves, and face shields. Generally, we should be able to maintain a safe distance from clients at all times. We would suggest, however, that you continue with effective hand washing. Gloves aren't recommended. Use of acceptable face protection for staff as well. This should be disposable or washable as required by the CDC. Obviously, keeping the well-being of our staff and our guests is the top priority. Look at getting all clients to sign a consent form before returning. Get them to acknowledge that there still is a risk of COVID-19 contamination, despite your compliance with and implementation of the relevant hygiene regulations and protection. Salons should continue or consider to use a touchless infrared thermometer to also check the temperature of each employee every day and of every client who enters into the shop. Any employee or client who has a temperature of above 99 degrees Fahrenheit should be sent home immediately and not allowed to return to the salon until they have no fever and no evidence of COVID-19 symptoms. Ask your clients to wash or sanitize their hands on arrival. If they need to enter the room to wash their hands, maybe look at having the door propped open so they don't need to touch the handle. Ensure a minimum of two minutes between people going to wash their hands in an enclosed space. Request in advance that they wear a face mask when entering and leaving the building and only remove this whilst they're in the salt room. Ask them to provide some feedback after their session as well. This can really go a long way to helping improve future sessions. It's always good to understand how they have felt or how they feel after their session or after their visit. Also, just remind the client to contact you if they do get any symptoms of illness over the next 14 days, because then you will need to refer back to your protocol and follow the procedures. So in summary, our goal really is to eliminate the fear by reducing the risk. Whether we look at having people in the rooms at one at a time, maybe only having friends and family together, maybe looking at having COVID-19 testing, temperature testing, pre-screening pre questionnaire, ensuring that the areas are clean, sanitized and disinfected, both before, during or in between sessions. Ensure that the correct training has been done for all your staff and ensure that the correct PPE is being worn by staff and visitors to protect and prevent. I feel if we can put all of this into practice, then our customers are going to feel at ease and safe and they will want to return. 
Fortunately for us, being part of the spa and wellness industry, a lot of work and effort has been put into producing documentation and procedures to help encourage and facilitate the opening of spas, hotels and salons. A great place to look for this information is on the Global Wellness Institute's website and in the UK, the UK Spa Association. There are a number of examples, guides and templates that you may find useful and are able to adapt. And hopefully what I've covered today are the health and safety basic considerations in a nutshell. Working together, we can make the sector of the industry a safe, successful and positive experience for everyone. So that's me done. Thank you for listening. And I will now try and release my screen and hand it over to Lisa. So good morning, everybody. And that was a great job, Erin. A lot, lot of really good information. <clears throat> so my talk is um, about halo therapy post COVID-19 and generating new customers in a post COVID-19 world and what you need to know. And I'll start by with a little story. I, I sent an email reminder out yesterday to all of my customers. Um, and, and a customer from Canada with a salt cave emailed me back asking to be removed from my list. She said because of COVID-19, she has lost her salt business and doesn't even want to hear the words salt therapy. So of course I apologized and wished her the best of luck, promptly removed her from my list, but it really drove home the need to have this webinar and this conversation. I felt terrible for her and of course for others that, that you know, maybe feel the same way. The information that I am going to share is really to get us all thinking about how those of us in the industry uh, will not only survive, but will thrive. <clears throat> so a little bit about me and my background. Lisa Samerly, and I was uh, the owner of Remedy Spa and Wellness in East Lansing, Michigan. I sold it after five years to go full-time with Halo Therapy Solutions, and I continue to consult with the new owners as they prepare to open. I was the lead executive rep with um, Merck Pharmaceuticals. I spent a decade speaking and learning from respiratory specialty physicians, including national thought leaders. I was a consultant to the Mid-Michigan Asthma Coalition and a trainer and respiratory disease state expert for Merck. And now I'm the vice president of uh, business development with Halo Therapy Solutions. There has never been more concern about improving one's respiratory health and engaging in regular respiratory hygiene than right now. I read that statement in an online article recently. And then as worries grow about the new coronavirus, online searches for ways to bolster the immune system have surged. And that came out of an article from the New York Times. So Halo Therapy today and what some of the experts are saying, well, you heard firsthand what Steve Spiro said, that interest in Halo Therapy is at an all time high right now. Um, last Friday, of course, as mentioned, 59 countries tuned in to hear more about halo therapy. Halo therapy is a natural and effective solution to respiratory hygiene, according to Dr. Andrew Mayo. When you're not feeling 100%, halo therapy should be the first line natural wellness treatment, according to Dr. Cindy Hollenbeck with the World Halo Therapy Association. One of the top wellness modalities searched for on Groupon. Clearlight sauna sales have increased significantly during the pandemic as people are looking for ways to improve their immune health. And that comes from Raleigh Duncan with uh, Clearlight Saunas. Why is halo therapy becoming so popular? A lot of this we already know. Respiratory illness is a chronic and growing epidemic. Our world is becoming more and more toxic every day. And as a result, more people are looking um, are experiencing a declining quality of life. Folks are looking for an all natural treatment to limit and minimize the use of pharmaceuticals. One in four in the United States have a skin condition, which of course flares up with stress. Autoimmune is on the rise, particularly in developed worlds and in, in, uh, with women. Respiratory hygiene and improving one's immune health are more important than ever in a post COVID-19 world. So Wellness Awakening, the Florida Spa and Wellness Association is marketing the statement Wellness Awakening. This Wellness Awakening is for the consumer who uses spa services for wellness. This is that 
post-pandemic person more concerned about staying healthy and fortifying their body. Halo therapy facilities need to be a part of the wellness awakening movement. The general consumer who may or may not have a pre-existing respiratory issue, and while they may think about their health and wellness, they may not have thought to include their immune health and respiratory hygiene in their respiratory health until this pandemic. These may be the customers that don't even know their customers yet, and that's where we come in. So the goal of Halo Therapy facility owners post COVID-19 is to create a wellness awakening and awareness in the general population that Halo Therapy is an all natural healing modality that helps improve respiratory hygiene, lower stress levels and improve overall immune and respiratory health. There needs to be the shift towards more of a lifestyle message, the same way diet and nutrition and exercise and quality sleep and stress reducing activities are all part of the conversation. Uh, we need to sort of start to shift this conversation. So who are our clients? Well, we know who our clients are. A majority of them are, res they have a respiratory condition. And when you look at it, um, the overall respiratory bucket, 60% are afflicted with some sort of respiratory condition in the United States. Uh, when you look at the autoimmune and overall health bucket, really you're talking about 100% of the population. Um, skin conditions, as high as 27% of the US population have some sort of skin condition. Um, and stress reduction, of course, who isn't <laughs> looking to, for ways to reduce stress? So when you're looking at that bucket, I think that's really where we went. I think as facility owners, we spend a lot of time talking about the respiratory bucket, which is good, and it represents the better half of the population. But we need to start to include folks in the autoimmune and folks concerned about their overall health bucket a lot more often, and here's why. When you're only talking about the respiratory segment, oftentimes you lose many of the other folks that may think, well, that's not me. I don't have asthma or COPD. And if they do, they're under the supervision of a doctor most often, and they're on multiple meds. And in order to gain control, they just start puffing on their in inhaler all day. And that's how they gain control. We don't want to niche halo therapy for folks only in that respiratory bucket. We want to cast a broader net that targets pretty much everyone, especially those with respiratory illness, and they know who they are. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our immune health. More often than not, folks concerned about their health overall, staying healthy, focused on diet and exercise, taking supplements and vitamins, staying fit, those are the ones who are more likely to seek out ways to enhance what they may already be doing and look for halo therapy. But they need to know what it is and they need to know it's for them and they need to understand it. So your immune system, your immune system is your body's defense against infection and other harmful invaders. Without it, you would constantly get sick from bacteria or viruses. When your immune system doesn't work the way it should, it's called an immune system disorder. You may be born with it. You may get a disease that weakens your immune system. You may have an immune system that is too active. This may happen with allergies and asthma and an immune system that turns against you and that's the, more the autoimmune. Having this fundamental understanding will help us to understand how halo therapy can help in the first line defense um, uh, you know, against halo therapy, against viruses and things like that. Okay, let me shift over here. Innate immune system. So innate or nonspecific immunity is the defense system uh, with which you were born. It protects you uh, against all antigens, which are basically foreign substances. Um, their innate immunity involves barriers that keep harmful materials from entering your body. These barriers form the first line of defense in the immune response. Examples of innate immunity include the cough reflex, enzymes and tears, skin oils, mucus, which traps bacteria in particles, the skin, stomach acids. And if an antigen gets past these barriers, it's attacked and destroyed by other parts of the immune system. So again, having these fundamental understanding about 
um, how halotherapy can help in this first line of defense, especially as it relates to respiratory illness, is really critical. So stress and the immune system. Again, when we're talking about stress, we're pretty much talking about 100% of the population. When we're stressed, the immune system's ability to fight off antigens, again, foreign substances, is reduced. That is why we are more susceptible to infections. The stress hormone cortisol, when constantly in action, can suppress the effectiveness of the immune system. Stress limits all systems in the body from operating optimally. So if cortisol levels are too high for too long because of chronic stress, the elevated levels may actually suppress the immune system and make you more susceptible to colds, flu, um, asthma flare-ups, and contagious illnesses, and in your risk of cancer and autoimmune diseases increase. Again, even more critical for folks with underlying conditions, including respiratory to avoid chronic stress and find ways to manage it. Immune health and respiratory health. There's a strong link between your immune health and your respiratory health. Studies show that people who are stressed are more, like, are more susceptible to developing cold and flu viruses. When the body is stressed, it is more likely to produce cytokines and other molecules that trigger asthma symptoms and inflammation. And remember, skin, mucus, skin oils, and coughing are all part of that first line of defense in the immune system. Allergies in the immune system. Most chronic uh, disease occurs when, when, when the body's immune system sees a substance as harmful and it overreacts to it. The immune system makes an antibody called IgE. So how does halo therapy help? Halo therapy will help to boost the immune response, control inflammation, and lower stress levels. As a result, your overall respiratory and skin health will improve. Consistent sessions will help to maintain this boosted state and help to prevent respiratory illness and flared up skin conditions. By cleansing and detoxifying your airway, halo therapy enables your respiratory system to work more efficiently resulting in higher oxygen intake, less inflammation, and improved mucosillary clearance. Mucosal surfaces represent, again, that first line of defense against infection and pollutants or organisms entrapped in respiratory secretions. Halo therapy helps to break this mucus up and allows for easier transport and clearance both in the upper and the lower respiratory system. Halo therapy is very beneficial for overall wellness and respiratory health, thereby improving your chances of not getting sick with a respiratory infection. And if you do, halo therapy may help to control some of your symptoms and recover a little bit faster. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit here. So as I stated earlier, Raleigh Duncan of Clearlight Sun has reported sales during the pandemic are at an all time high. When I asked him why, he said it was because people are looking for ways to improve their immune health. So far infrared combined with halo therapy. And we really, a lot of us understand far infrared and its health, its health benefits, especially around improving the immune system, helping with that boost, improving um, uh, stress and fatigue and, and improved skin as well, as well as detoxification. Uh, there is some uncertainty on exactly how saunas reduce the risk of respiratory disease. The thought is that the infrared heat is required for all living things for optimum health. The radiant heat from the far infrared sauna surrounds you and penetrates deep into your joints, your muscles, and tissues, increasing oxygen flow and circulation. Heat from the infrared reduces congestion in the lungs and allows for deeper penetration and improved ventilation. When the air is dry and warm, it will allow for deeper penetration and better absorbency of the salt uh, in the bronchi and the distal airways. Halo therapy at low levels of heat enhances the experience and the efficacy of halo therapy. The benefits of far infrared are obviously better known and understood than all the true benefits of halo therapy. The general public, if they have even heard of halo therapy, and most, thank God, today have, um, likely don't understand all of its benefits. They don't understand the complete detox of the skin and the lungs that it provides. Um, both, again, which are involved in that first line of defense in the immune system. Those of us in the industry need to help consumers get there to be a part of the wellness awakening. 
So looking specifically at respiratory and how halotherapy helps, I think a lot of us already understand this. Salt is antimicrobial, antibacterial. It helps to draw the impurities out of the airway, both the upper and lower. It stimulates the body's internal processes for cleansing and removing buildup of foreign particles. It's anti-inflammatory. It opens up the bronchial tubes in the lungs and reduces inflammation in the sinuses. It strengthens respiratory function. It breaks up and clears that mucus that we talked about, and the heat from the infrared reduces congestion in the lungs and allows for deeper penetration and improved ventilation. So you can really see how far infrared along with halo therapy really have that synergistic effect. And asthma is a small airways disease. It's a disease of inflammation and it occurs in those smallest of airways. So halo therapy can really penetrate deep into those smallest of airways with the help of infrared. It's really a win-win. Athletes, are we talking about athletes? That's another huge segment, another really growing segment as recovery becomes a big buzzword. More and more people are talking about recovery right now. So we really need to make sure that that's a target um, for folks when they're returning back to halo therapy. Um, all, you know, we know and understand some of the things that halo therapy does to help athletes. It enhances athletic performance overall. It, uh, research suggests that one in three athletes have some sort of echo or um, EIB, uh, asthma-related exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. It expands the airway for increased lung function. It increases oxygen saturation and exchange. It helps with that muscle endurance and recovery, strengthens, strengthens the abdominal wall and muscle for increased lung capacity and oxygenation, helps with muscle and pain relief, and it, again, helps with joint pain and stiffness. And both halo therapy and infrared do help with that. And then looking at skin, and honestly, in my five years as a halo therapy owner and operator, I've seen the most dramatic changes in this segment. Um, it does require more of a sustained use of halo therapy, maybe two or three times a week to start at higher concentrations, but the results are truly remarkable. Um, the way that halo therapy helps with skin and as does far infrared, which I didn't realize until we, we obviously partnered with Clearlight. I've come to understand a little bit more about how they work synergistically together. But again, 27% of the US population has a skin condition. So it's a target audience that we definitely don't want to overlook. So just to recap, facilities need to be a part of that wellness awakening movement. Halo therapy is a complete detox of the skin and lungs. The role of halo therapy amid COVID-19 should be viewed similar to how you would keep your body strong, like staying hydrated, good nutrition, good sleep habits, and exercise. Keep your lungs strong by incorporating regular halo therapy to promote lung health and overall health. Halo therapy will help to strengthen your immune response and the first line of defense against foreign substances, mucus, skin, and skin oils. Remember, first line of defense Defense, and may provide some measure of protection against cold, flu, and other infections, and possibly reduce the length and severity of symptoms. The goals of folks on this call is to educate and to help communities understand how halo therapy can help. And, and I'll say it again, not just if they have asthma or allergies, but for the athlete looking for faster recovery, the person with psoriasis or eczema who is under stress and their condition is getting much worse. We need to educate folks with respiratory disease just how important regular halo therapy can be in their lives. We need to remind folks that have skin conditions that halo therapy can help by protecting their largest organ, the body's first line of defense in the immune response, and the skin conditions that flare up when the body is stressed. We need to educate folks without any underlying respiratory or skin condition that regular halo therapy will fortify their immune system lower stress levels, and help them stave off cold, flu, and other microbials, keep their, cort their cortisol levels down, and keep their lungs strong and their skin healthy, all so vital in one's overall health. And with that, I'll, the disclaimer, of course, the information is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure. It's just for education and background information. Um, and obviously, the effects of halo therapy have not be re been reviewed or studied by the FDA. It, one of the things that we talked about, Aaron, Steve, and I, about you know 
as Erin went through her presentation, we're like, how can we be part of the solution? Well, one, we can help you to really understand the messaging and those new segments that may be there that don't even realize that they're customers yet. We need to be like far infrared in the sauna industry. It's really a part, we really need to make people understand how halo therapy can intrinsically help with the overall immune res response. And one of the things we want to do is we wanted to be able to help people that already have facilities. You know, some of the things that Erin talked about. So we're offering um, a webinar special that's good through July 15th, where if you have a larger facility and now you're considering maybe dividing it into two more private rooms, we're going to take $1,000 off of any halo generator. For somebody that has a halo cave and they want to offer a more just a single or private option for somebody that really will feel more comfortable um, doing an individual treatment, we're taking $2,000 off of our halo booth. And then for the folks that, again, want to incorporate that far infrared along with their halo therapy and also offer a private um, session, Steve and I, and we talked about this, we're going as far as $3,000 off, which is really doubling the current special that we have right now, good through July 15th. And that's for the Halo IR and the Halo Star. The Halo Star is pictured there at the bottom and the Halo IR is right here. That Halo IR does come in four sizes. This is a, a picture of the individual one. So it's just an opportunity to help everybody be able to offer halo therapy safely, privately if need be, um, to all of our halo therapy communities. And with that, I will say thank you and feel free to call me with any additional questions or if you wanna learn more about the specials. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Steve, where do you want to go from here? I have, a, I have a, a couple of questions that are actually similar that have been hit to me on the chat. No, I great. So first, first, I want to thank, I'm going to thank Aaron and Lisa. That was extremely informative. And just to let everybody know, I think Terry let everybody know in the beginning, but there is a recording of it we will send out to you as well as the slides. But I think that would be great, Terry. Why don't you uh, ask the questions and hopefully Lisa, Aaron, or I, or I, or you can answer the questions. Okay, so first of all, if anyone has any other questions, just post them to the chat. You should see at the bottom um, a, the word chat. If you click on that, it should open up a new window where you can type in your question. Um, <clears throat> so the, I got a few questions that are all basically the same question. So um, as I reopen, um, considering doing shorter sessions, to avoid overlap and to make sure um, you know I have the space in between people. So, can you advise on the efficacy of a shorter session, like 20 or 30 minutes? Um, because I'm currently doing something longer than that, let's say 45 minutes, um, as well as the ventilation. So, any any uh, feedback on shorter sessions, efficacy of the shorter sessions, so people can create those buffers that you're. Uh, you're uh, prescribing. And I don't know who to ask that to, so I would say anybody that wants to take it, go ahead. Lisa, 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 you wanna try that one? Sure, yeah, so obviously if you're in a smaller, more confined space, the concentration of salt um, that's kinetically active in the air is higher. Um, so presumably the time that you need to spend in that enclosure is less. Um, and really that's, that's the long and short of it. If you're in a larger room, it takes longer time to absorb the same amount of salt into the airways and onto the skin as if you're in just a very small confined space. It just doesn't require the same amount of time. Okay, Erin, did you have any comments on that question before we move on? No, I, I completely agree with Lisa. I mean, we use one in our, um, our showroom um, at DROM and we do 20 minute sessions and I have to say that that's been perfect for me um, and the, the volume of salt you know obviously there's the adjustment on the, the machine as well which can control the amount that comes out um, and then if you did look to divide a bigger room down even if you're not using that space you could look at putting like a plexiglass screen in just to make the room smaller um, and therefore improving the efficacy of that amount of salt. Mm -hmm. um, and I also had, uh, I have had two 
uh, booths myself, one of which was the Halo IR that you saw um, on Lisa's slides. Um, and I do 20 minute sessions in that Halo IR. It's a, it's a fairly small one. Um, it fits it really, in, it's really for an individual, but two people that are friendly uh, or live together certainly could fit in there. So that's a 20 minute session and it's, it's more than enough. Um, also the background of my Zoom uh, photo here is, is the cabin that I used to have. Uh, and that's our, our medium sized cabin. And I used to do 25 minute sessions with five minutes for um, venting. And then the next person would come in. So there'd be a five minute buffer in between people. Um, and, and 25 minutes at that size, the medium cabin was worked out very well. Um, so I, I think that you should be able to be, a, be able to, to uh, lower the, the minutes of the session. If you have a cave, then you may want to congregate um, nearer the, the halo generator, or like Aaron suggested, maybe um, create a barrier so that the space becomes smaller, because uh, you're not going to fill it up with people anyway. Um, okay, so the next question uh, is any, any data, any hard data on the athletic performance? Um, so I'm going to answer that question first, and then I'll let other people go. Um, in our most recent webinar, a few days, a week ago or so, um, Dr. Cindy Hollenbach from the World Halo Therapy Association mentioned that um, she had done a recent study that showed a 13% increase in lung function. Um, and I believe it was 22, 25 minute sessions per week for six weeks, I think. Um, we will have, Halo Therapy Solutions will have a recording of um, Dr. Hollenbach's uh, discussion of that, um, of that um, research that she did soon on our website. Uh, so that's the one that I know of. Does anybody else know of anything in the athletic space? Uh, we've been conducting our own um, testing on some elite athletes in our salt room at DROM. Um, we've also come up with similar data. Um, uh, VO2 max has improved. Um, and we're getting much um, better lung function from them. The athletes have been um, peaking better. We're, we're specifically targeting cyclists and um, we're seeing them reach um, you know, new personal bests. Uh, so it's really good to see. Obviously, um, you know, we're just gonna keep doing that in the background. Excellent. Okay, um, so the next question is a broader research question. Any landmark research studies, articles available that support the physiological benefits and results of allotherapy. So um, again, I'll, I'll provide two resources. One is the Global Wellness Institute. There is a halo therapy specific um, group there that's led by Steve Spiro. And there is some research on the Global Wellness Institute's website. Also, the, um, uh, the, the World Halo Therapy Association, I believe it's worldhalotherapy.com. Um, also has some research available on, on halo therapy. And then halotherapysolutions.com, our website also has links to many studies. There's a lot of different studies over the last two or 300 years. Many of them have been in, in Eastern Europe because that's where the, uh, the modality really was born. Um, so let me stop there. Does anybody else have any other resources for uh, research on halo therapy? No, I think those are the three best um, sources that are out there right now for more information. Okay. Um, the next question, and there's actually quite a few of them that are similar. So how are cleaning solutions impacting the saunas, the salt booths, the wood, et cetera? Are there any specific solutions that you recommend? Another woman asked about uh, the UV wand, what can be used to clean our salt booth, salt booth without introducing chemicals? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then uh, Shauna Hale, who I know, uh, posted that she uses Pure Green 24. I don't know of that one specifically, but are there any specific recommendations around cleaning solutions? I'm just picking up quickly on the, um, the sauna. There was a um, kind of a sauna webinar the other day held on the Global Wellness Institute. It was a sauna debate. Um, they were talking about how to um, keep your saunas clean um, post COVID as well. So that might be worth uh, looking on the Global Wellness Institute information there. 
Um, it is basically going back to basics and doing the um, soap and water in, um, on the timber. In a traditional sauna, you're hitting much higher temperatures um, and it's been proven that the coronavirus doesn't withstand higher temperatures. I believe it's above something like 65, 70 degrees Celsius. So naturally the bugs are being killed in the saunas. However, if you're looking at the infra cabin um, with the wood, obviously that's more of like a, a porous material uh, versus the, um, the maybe coronal plexiglass, which is easily to be able to wipe down. Um, so I think that there is a new product um, called Lahiti, so L-A-H-T-I, that's been released. I just saw it the other day. Uh, it's from one of our sauna suppliers, actually. Um, I'll dig out the link and maybe we can post that, Steve. Um, and that is something that's useful to use on timber. They also produce a, um, a spray, a non-toxic spray that you apply to uh, timber before use. Um, and you do that every three to six months and that actually protects the timber against um, uh, moisture and things like that. Um, so moving on to the next one, which was about the, the cleaning products. Um, I think the best thing really is you'll need to check, um, obviously, on the bottle. I think um, we've gone, going to be restricted by what is proven to actually kill uh, the correct bacteria or viruses. So I don't think you can just go around just using any kind of cleaning, um, cleaning uh, solutions. Um, to check on the website, the EPA website, um, type in what it is that you may be looking to use. They do have some advice on there as well. So I think just check the label mainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually an interesting question that, that I was asked uh, in my sauna the other day was, um, we had traditionally used an organic sanitize, sanitizer spray, um, but it doesn't include alcohol. Um, so the question was, is that sufficient to kill coronavirus? Um, and I didn't know the answer to that. So now we actually provide the organic spray as well as a separate um, alcohol-based spray and then let the person decide how they feel. Mm -hmm. And then we wipe it down afterwards with the alcohol spray. So um, again, it may be, you know, more of a choice and and i think in your comment aaron about the salt on the floor salt is inherently antimicrobial so it shouldn't be an issue however if your clients are uncomfortable it doesn't really matter whether it's an issue they're not going to want to go in there right so you really need to work with your clients to find out what they're comfortable with and i think aaron you know said it earlier was ask for feedback uh, when people call when people inquire when people visit ask them, did you feel comfortable? Is there something I can do to make it, to make you feel more comfortable? Because it's not always about what the truth is. It may just be about how they feel. And if they don't feel comfortable, they're just not gonna come back. So you really need to work with them. Um, so we have some more questions about uh, what do you recommend for seating? No um, gravity chairs, how do you sanitize the chairs? So, I mean, I think, you know, my take on seating is you wanna keep it separate. Uh, you, you're going to need to require, you know, there's probably going to be required the six foot separation, at least in the United States. Um, however, in, in the ones that I have, I'm only allowing people that live together to go in together. So it doesn't really matter if they're separating, they can choose to separate. Um, although in the sauna, there's not enough room in my sauna for them to separate. So if they don't want to be next to each other, then they just need to do it separately. Um, or if they live together, they're doing it together because they're already you know, they've already both infected each other, if that's the case. Um, but obviously, no, uh, no um, symptoms, you know, a asymptomatic. I did go out and buy one of those uh, digital uh, thermometers so I can do a quick, um, you know, temperature okay. of the forehead. It takes only seconds. Um, and I haven't found anyone with the temperature, although we did have an argument of what the temperature should be, because some people were at 99, some people were at 98. So I think our state of Massachusetts is saying over 100.5 or something like that. Um, so I think you're safe under 100 degrees if you're using temperature as a, as a guide. Um, okay, so is there a way to install IR in a salt room besides purchasing a booth? So I'll, I'll let Steve speak to this, but it's my understanding that if you put infrared and salt together and uh, on your own, the, the salt is gonna corrode the infrared components. 
And in our infrared sauna halo therapy combination, there's a coating, there's a specific coating over all the infrared components to avoid that, that corrosion or that salt impact. I don't know, Steve, if you want to talk at, at all about IR married to uh, halo therapy. Right. So, so two, two comments. Um, one is, yes, you, you can't just put up a, a halo generator and onto any kind of infrared or any other sauna because of the corrosion. But we have a custom program with Clearlight. Um, they can protect some of their panels for a customized room. So if you have any specific uh, application for that, please reach out to Lisa. Again, Lisa at halotherapysolutions.com and her phone number is on the screen. And there may be some things we can do with actually building a, helping you build a custom room that still protects the, um, the infrared. Again, this is the technology we've worked with Clearlight. So I can't say any other coils or components of infrared panels will work. I know Clearlight will um, in partnership with us. So again, reach out to Lisa on that specific application. Okay, great. So uh, another couple more questions. Looking at state guidelines, where does halo therapy fit? If you're not a spa, quote unquote, what are you? Um, so I know that in Massachusetts, from an insurance standpoint, my wellness center, which only was salt therapy, was considered to be a spa. Um, so I would um, use spa as my category for the state of Massachusetts. Um, I, I'm, there probably are other categories that might fit if you're a, a halo therapy only. Um, and they're, I think they're specific to states. So um, if anybody, I, I don't know, Aaron, you're not in the U.S., but I don't know if Lisa or Steve, have you heard of any, like how halo therapy only is considered um, from these phased in state get guidelines? I mean, I, I think the same, the same way any wellness facility or fitness or even um, spa would be bucketed is my guess, but I don't know that for certain. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I would definitely research it in your individual state, but I, I don't know of any uh, answers to that other than it being a spa. So someone else asked, what if I have a client that, that is recovering from COVID-19? What is the protocol for them re-entering the facility? And what is the time frame that the client, the client is no longer infectious? So I, I, have, oh. I don't know that. I would, I would guess I would look for a, a negative test um, but I don't really know the answer to that. Does anybody else have any uh, thoughts yeah. on, on that? The, the, the current guidance is 14 days from um, initial symptoms. However, um, depending on the severity, um, those symptoms may not be initially um, there. So what I would probably consider looking at is anyone who has been tested positive or had those symptoms is to ask them for 30 days from initial symptoms. That gives you a bit of a safe zone as well. Um, and you can advise all clients that that is what your protocol is. It's, it's completely up to you at this stage. There is no hard guidance on what you can and can't do, but the, um, the minimum um, time that they're saying is a 14-day isolation period from initial symptoms. Mm -hmm. They're saying that the contagious part of it is in those first initial three to five days. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, uh, we have time probably for one more question. Do salt bricks and panels without a halo generator provide any health benefit other than the visual aesthetics? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's an easy one. Um, obviously the Himalayan salt has been thought to be the world's pure, uh, first air purifier and it does give off negative ions, which do have some therapeutic effect, but for the most part, they're aesthetic. They help to provide a really beautiful calming atmosphere, but without an actual halo generator on the outside of the equipment or the room, you're not offering halo therapy. Yeah, I, I think that that's what I always do when I travel and I want to do halo therapy. When I call to make an appointment, I ask them, do they have, is there a halo generator? Is there something that is, that is taking salt and pushing it into the room that you're breathing in? Otherwise, again, you're just, it's a great place to relax and um, it's calming, um, but it's not halo therapy and you're not getting that, that, that pure pharmaceutical grade salt deep inside of your lungs. Um, and that's another important thing. Make sure that the salt is pure pharmaceutical because if it's, if it's 
Himalayan salt that's crushed up or regular salt that's crushed up. Salt, as everyone knows, is very absorbent. So it absorbs everything in its area, including toxins. And that's why Himalayan salt is the color that it is because it's absorbed heavy metal like iron and copper into, into it. So it looks beautiful and it adds to the taste of food, but it's not something that you want to breathe into your lungs. Um, okay, so last question. Any, are there any recommendations for UV wands? Um, several people have asked that. I, I don't know the answer to that. I think that um, uh, Raleigh um, is going to be making a recommendation or maybe even be manufacturing one. I think I heard, but I'm not really sure. So does anyone know uh, um, UV wand recommendations or a role? Will we or Clearlight be selling one or what, what should people do if they want? Yeah, to so, so yeah, so go, go to uh, infraredsauna.com. That's Clearlight's website. They have a joint venture or joint partnership with Jacuzzi. Um, they were supposed to launch it a couple days ago. Check out their website. Um, so I think it's going to be a great product. As, as uh, Aaron said, it's about $249, I think. And, uh, and just call their 1-800 number, which is on the site as well, for more information. All right, great. So it's now uh, 1 p.m. So what I would say is if you have any other questions, please email info, I-N-F-O, at halotherapysolutions.com, and we will be glad to answer those for you. Um, also, we will be making this available, this recording available soon. It will be on our Facebook page and on our website probably in the next day or two. So look for that or, you know, if, if, if someone you know had to miss the, miss the meeting, then uh, please pass that on to them. So other than that. Terrence, can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry. My name is Kelly and this is the second time I've attended a webinar and I haven't been able to ask my question. I just posted it. I posted it on the, on the thing, but you skipped over it. Are you the um, one that I have a question about co-working? Yes, yes. You didn't ask a question, so I didn't know what to, what to say. Because <laughs> I wanted to say it verbally. <laughs> okay, so we um, were doing that, unfortunately, and we're running out of time, so please hurry up. All right, well, that's okay. Uh, it's just, this is a good platform to ask the question about co-working spaces and um, salt booths, because uh, I live in Europe, and there are lots and lots of co-working spaces, but I... I was just wanted to inquire about uh, the the independent use of of a salt booth. In other words, uh, giving the responsibility to the people who work in that co-working space, uh, as compared to someone who owns, um, you know, a, a salt uh, a salt cave or whatever. Um, what is your take on? on handing the responsibility to say, for example, my daughter who works in a co-working space. And if, uh, if, they, if they adopted a, a, a salt booth, for example, I can't be there to teach them how to do it. So do, do you recommend the, um, the use of these in co-working spaces? Are co-working spaces popular in the US? Okay, so I'll, I'll answer that. Okay, so I, I basically, I've basically been traveling the world for the last few years, trying to get halo therapy mm -hmm. established. And I'm in a co-working space every day of the year, pretty much, whether it's in Asia or Europe. So yes, mm -hmm. this would be perfect for co-working. And as Lisa said, or Aaron said, this is an automated service. The person just needs to press the button. It, it, the mm -hmm. person doesn't need to be a trained masseuse or a trained you know, physiotherapist. So this, this is perfect for co-working spaces. Okay, but as far as uh, post COVID nineteen, then the the employee. Uh, when I say employee, I don't mean the employees of the of the co working space. I mean literally all the people like yourself who take advantage of this co working space. Then we would have to make that person responsible for disinfecting it. Yes. Correct. And yes. I think well, so, so, well, again, again, go ahead. Yeah, everyone in the world is going to have to take responsibility for their own health and wellness. And I think if you have some kind of protocols or a checklist there for those that are going to go and use it, um, they're mm. signing up for something that they they are partaking in. It's, it's no different to any other kind of role in the business that this is what you will do when you use this machine or this room and you will adhere to the rules that are given for you to follow. Okay. We all have to take responsibility. 
Thanks, Aaron. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize, but it's it's now over and we're, we're starting another meeting um, here at one o'clock ah. Eastern time. So we will be shutting down now. Again, the recording will be available afterwards, uh, the slides as well. And if you have any other questions, just send them to info at halotherapysolutions.com. Thank you very much.